The Magnificat Latin for My Soul magnifies the Lord is a canticle, also known as the Song of Mary, the Canticle of Mary and, in the Byzantine tradition, the Ode of the Theotokos Greek. He oid it is traditionally incorporated into the liturgical services of the Catholic Church at Vespers and of the Eastern Orthodox Churches at the morning services. It is one of the eight most ancient Christian hymns and perhaps the earliest Marian hymn. Its name comes from the insipid of the Latin version of the canticle's text. The text of the canticle is taken directly from the Gospel of Luke 146-55 where it is spoken by Mary upon the occasion of her visitation to her cousin Elizabeth. In the narrative, after Mary greets Elizabeth, who is pregnant with John the Baptist, the latter moves within Elizabeth's womb. Elizabeth praises Mary for her faith using words partially reflected in the Hail Mary, and Mary responds with what is now known as the Magnificat. Within the whole of Christianity, the Magnificat is most frequently recited within the Liturgy of the Hours. In Western Christianity, the Magnificat is most often sung or recited during the main evening prayer service, Vespers in the Catholic and Lutheran churches, and evening prayer or evensong in Anglicanism. In Eastern Christianity, the Magnificat is usually sung at Sunday matins. Among Protestant groups, the Magnificat may also be sung during worship services, especially in the Advent season during which these verses are traditionally read. Context Mary's Magnificat, recorded only in Luke's Gospel, is one of four hymns, distilled from a collection of early Jewish Christian canticles, which complement the promise fulfillment theme of Luke's infancy narrative. These songs are Mary's Magnificat, Zechariah's Benedictus 1 the Angel's Gloria in Excelsis Deo 2 and Simeon's Nunc Dimittis 2 in form and content, these four canticles are patterned on the hymns of praise in Israel's Psalter. In structure, these songs reflect the compositions of pre-Christian contemporary Jewish hymnology. The first stanza displays graphically a characteristic feature of Hebrew poetry, synonymous parallelism, in ascribing praise to God, my soul, mirrors, my spirit, proclaims the greatness, with, has found gladness, of the Lord with, in God my Savior. The balance of the opening two lines bursts out into a dual magnificat of declaring the greatness of and finding delight in God. The third stanza again demonstrates parallelism, but in this instance, three contrasting parallels, the proud are reversed by the low estate, the mighty by those of low degree, and the rich by the hungry, although there is some scholarly discussion of whether the historical Mary herself actually proclaimed this canticle, Luke portrays her as the singer of this song of reversals and the interpreter of the contemporary events taking place. Mary symbolizes both ancient Israel and the Lucan faith community as the author, singer of the Magnificat. The canticle echoes several biblical passages, but the most pronounced allusions are to the Song of Hannah, from the books of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Scriptural echoes from the Torah, the prophets, and the writings complement the main allusions to Hannah's Magnificat of rejoicing. Along with the Benedictus, as well as several Old Testament canticles, the Magnificat is included in the Book of Odes, an ancient liturgical collection found in some manuscripts of the Septuagint. <laughs> Structure In a style reminiscent of Old Testament poetry and song, Mary praises the Lord in alignment with this structure. Mary rejoices that she has the privilege of giving birth to the promised Messiah Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 48. She glorifies God for his power, holiness, and mercy Luke chapter 1 verses 49 to 50. Mary looks forward to God transforming the world through the Messiah. The proud will be brought low, and the humble will be lifted up, the hungry will be fed, and the rich will go without Luke chapter 1 verses 51 to 53. Mary exalts God because he has been faithful to his promise to Abraham Luke chapter 1 verses 54 to 55, see God's promise to Abraham in Gen 12 to 1 minus 3. Text Latin and Anglican translation Topic. 
Roman Catholic translation Traditional My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid, for behold from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Because he that is mighty hath done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him. He hath showed might in his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the conceit of their heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath received Israel his servant, being mindful of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Modern My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favor on his humble servant, from this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name, he has mercy on those who fear him. In every generation, he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit, he has cast down the mighty from their thrones. And has lifted up the humble, he has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty, he has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Greek The first written variant of the Magnificat was in Koine Greek, Megalene he psyche mo tun kyrian kai egalius and tenuma mo epa toi theoi toi soteri mo hoti epeblepsin epa ten tepenosin tes duels of edu gar apo tu nin makariusin mi pasai hi geniae hoti epoisin moi megala ho dinatos kai hagian to anoma auto kai tu elios auto ice genius kai genius twa phobumenwa auton. Epoisen kratos en brachioni auto discorpusen hyperophonus dianwa i cardias auton cathylon dynastus apo thronen kai hypsosen tapenus pinantas enapelsen agathon kai plutuntas exapashtylon kenis antilabato israel pedos auto nisthenai eleus cathos alelizen pros tus pateras hemen toi abram kai toi spermati auto ice ton iona in Eastern Orthodox worship. The ode of the Theotokos is accompanied by the following refrain sung between the verses. A and a megalinarian, which is the second part of the Axion Eston hymn. Ten Timeteron ton cherubim kai indoxteron asyncritos ton seraphim ten adiophthoros theon logon tekuson ten antos theotokon se megalinomen you who are more to be honored than the cherubim and incomparably more glorious than the seraphim, you who, uncorrupted, gave birth to God the Word, in reality the God-bearer, we exalt you. Slavonic The translation of the hymn into Church Slavonic is as follows. Liturgical use The text forms a part of the daily office in the Roman Catholic Vespers service, the Lutheran Vespers service, and the Anglican services of evening prayer, according to both the Book of Common Prayer and Common Worship. In the Book of Common Prayer evening prayer service, it is usually paired with the Nunc Dimittis. The Book of Common Prayer allows for an alternative to the Magnificat, the Cantate Domino, Psalm chapter 98, and some Anglican rubrics allow for a wider selection of canticles, but the Magnificat and Nunc Dimittis remain the most popular. In Anglican, Lutheran, and Catholic services, the Magnificat is generally followed by the Gloria Patri. It is also commonly used among Lutherans at the Feast of the Visitation, July 2. In Orthodox liturgical practice, the Magnificat is usually sung during the Matins service before the Ermos of the Ninth Ode of the Canon. After each biblical verse, i.e., as a stitcheron, the following megalinarian or troparian is sung. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim, without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word, true Theotokos, we magnify thee. As a canticle, the Magnificat has frequently been set to music. 
Most compositions were originally intended for liturgical use, especially for Vesper services and celebrations of the Visitation, but some are also performed in concert. Musical settings As the Magnificat is part of the sung Vespers, many composers, beginning in the Renaissance, set the words to music, for example Claudio Monteverdi's Vespro della Beata Virgine 1610. Vivaldi composed a setting of the Latin text for soloists, choir, and orchestra, as did Johann Sebastian Bach in his Magnificat 1723, Rev. 1733. Other notable examples include C.P.E. Bach's Magnificat. Anton Bruckner composed a Magnificat for soloists, choir, orchestra, and organ. Rachmaninoff and, more recently, John Rutter also composed a setting, inserting additions into the text. Dieter Schnebel wrote a Magnificat in 1996–97 for small choir shola, percussion and additional instruments ad libitum. Arvo Part composed a setting for choir a cappella. Kim Andre Arneson's Magnificat for Choir, Strings, Piano, and Organ premiered in 2010. The Taizé community have also composed an ostinato setting of the text, together with the Nunc Dimittis. The Magnificat is a regular part of the Anglican Evensong. The Mag and Nunc has been set by many composers, such as Thomas Tallis, Ralph Vaughan Williams, Herbert Sumption, Charles Wood, and John Tavener, of Anglican church music, often for choir a cappella or choir and organ. Since the canticles are sung every day at some cathedrals, Charles Villiers Stanford wrote a Magnificat in every major key, and Herbert Howells published 18 settings over his career, including Magnificat and Nunc Dimittis for St. Paul's Cathedral. An Eastern Orthodox setting of the Magnificat text in Latin and English is to be found in the 2011 All Night Vigil section 11 by the English composer Clive Strutt. Maria Louise Thermaire wrote in 1954 the lyrics for a popular German ecumenical hymn based on the Magnificat, Den Herren will ich loben, set to a 1613 melody by Melchior Teschner, that a valet will ich dir geben. The Oratorio Laudato Si, composed in 2016 by Peter Roiline on a libretto by Helmut Schlegel, includes the full Latin text of the Magnificat, expanded by writings of Claire of Assisi, Francis of Assisi, and Pope Francis. Society and politics In Nicaragua, the Magnificat is a favorite prayer among many peasants and is often carried as a sacramental. During the Somoza years, campesinos were required to carry proof of having voted for Somoza. This document was mockingly referred to as a Magnificat. See also Incipit Visitation Christianity